How to sell high ticket. In order to sell high ticket, you should know how to speak about your offer very well. And in order to confidently speak about your offer, you need to have the clarity. I know you've been hearing clarity everywhere and you're gonna say, Car Mom, now pretty clear. I know who I'm serving and I know what I'm helping with. Okay, I get it. But hear me out. If you feel like you're having to keep explaining yourself whenever someone asks you about what you do or whenever you're pitching your offer, or if you see that you're getting questions about how you help or what does that do or how to do that, if you keep explaining these answers all the time, then you really may need to clarify it a little bit more. And that's what we're going to talk about today in this video. We're going to talk about clarifying that gap. If we haven't met yet, I'm Karma Hunter, owner of KarmaDNA.com. I help online coaches and entrepreneurs plan their launches with evergreen systems and strategies so that they can scale to 10K months without social media and tech burnout. Today we're talking about how to sell high ticket. So in this video, I'm going to try to clarify that clarity for you. And what I want to start with is this one example. You may have heard of the drill example before. Don't sell the drill, sell the need and the transformation. Here's what I mean. Let's say you're selling drills. You pretty much know the market value of your drill and you are not going to feel really good about doubling that market value and try to charge double of that unless you can show a difference in this drill, right? Because otherwise people are going to be like, okay, you're selling a drill and so what? So think about this. And if you ever heard about this example before, you're selling the drill so that someone puts a hole in the wall, right? That's the fact. Okay. That's the real reason why they want a drill. But what is the reason why they want to put a hole in the wall? Maybe to put up a frame, to put up a shelf. Okay. What is the reason why they want to put up a shelf on the wall? Maybe a family moved about a month or two ago and the wife is nagging that the shelves are still not up on the walls yet. So the husband is going to Walmart, I mean, or Home Depot, wherever, to get a drill so that he can put up the shelves so that he can stop the nagging, right? So you're actually giving him a peace of mind or you're giving him a, a, a better relationship. Now, that's when you created the gap. That's when you showed. Otherwise, why should I want to have a drill? So now you can talk about, well, you can have a drill so that as soon as you move, you don't have to um, wait on trying to put up a shelf on the wall because you'll have your drill ready. Or now you can say, hey, don't have any more nagging because you'll have your uh, drill ready and you can put up whatever it is on the wall. Or you can talk about, hey, you don't have to worry about hiring a handyman every time your wife gets a shelf or your wife gets wall art, right? Now you created the gap. Now you showed how your drill is bridging that gap for them. So that's the most important part and that's what you need to show your clients. That's the only time you can sell a high ticket offer because that's the only time you are actually showing your expertise by creating that gap and showing how you're bridging that gap. Let me give you an example from my clients. One of my new clients, she has been a uh, graphic designer and she wants to have a high ticket offer. She can't decide if she wants to be a social media manager, if she wants to become a social media coach. And she came to me so that we can clarify her offer and uh, make sure that she has a high ticket offer, make sure she knows how to clearly talk about this and that's so that she can actually build authority and expertise in her niche, right? And she told me, Karma, you know, it's not sustainable. I'm charging $100 per project or I'm charging um, $15, $20 an hour. That's not sustainable. That's not scalable. It's already hard to find clients like this. So. I ask her, who do you help? And she tells me entrepreneurs and she helps them uh, create their, their social media images. 
she couldn't just come out and say, hey, I'm a social media manager now. Or I'm, a, I'm a social media coach now. And when we were talking about this, I asked her, how do you help your clients uh, accomplish what they want to accomplish, right? Basically, I asked her to walk me through the things that she teaches. What do you teach? Is it creating captions? Is it creating images? What not, right? So she said creating images. And she's like, but Karma, I can't just say I will teach you how to create an Instagram image and charge people $2,000. Okay, you're right. When you say it like that, obviously not. I'm not going to pay you $2,000 for create, teaching me to create one Instagram image or, or a couple of Instagram images. And that's where the clarity is very important because when I asked her who she helps, she tells me she helps entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs who want social media presence. Yes, I get that, but you're not doing yourself any good because the entrepreneur who has a local brick and mortar, entrepreneur who, uh, who's a, I don't know, fitness influencer on Instagram, and entrepreneur who is a mom blogger, has completely different needs and you need to create completely different gaps for each of those avatars entrepreneur is a big umbrella a instagram influencer a fitness influencer on instagram you if you tell them i'm gonna help i'm gonna teach you how to create your instagram graphic templates great well, but what is the benefit of that to them? Are you actually teaching them just to create a graphic image? Or are you teaching them a strategic content creation system that they can rinse and repeat every time and it will stop the scroll every time so that they can attract more leads to their business? Or th so that they can attract more followers? There you go. You just created that gap and you just bridged that gap. Now, that's completely different than the gap of a mom blogger. Are you teaching them how to create their blog images? Yeah. But what is the benefit of that to them? What is the gap? Where is the gap? What are you bridging for them? So then maybe it is that you're helping them create a rinse and repeat system that is strategic and... Um, it's going to get more eyes on their blog post uh, so that they don't have to spend money on a freelancer every time they write a blog post. Now you save them money. Or maybe you could say, you know, save time to spend with your kids more. Now, you, again, you see what I'm talking about? You created that gap and you bridged that gap. So now they actually have a reason to learn how to create this image and how to create it your way and that's how you can actually sell the high ticket that's how you can even talk about a high ticket so that you can attract those uh, leads and you can actually convert them now let me know in the comments what is the gap that you're bridging and if you're not clear with it yet what's holding you back what are some of the question questions you have in your mind that holds you back from niching down or clarifying or, or actually uh, coming up with that bridge. I'll see you on the next video.